Saint Paul's spirituality. As we all know that the New Testament mostly comprises of letters from Saint Paul. He had a call and a mission which was very specific. There are no better words than those of John Chrysostom who lived in the 4th century to introduce Saint Paul and his theology. He wrote to the Christians of his time which are meaningful to us even today. I rejoice when Paul is read in the liturgy. I'm excited when his words are heard. My heart throbs and beats each time when I recognize his voice. I feel that he had come down to us and is speaking to the church. And what pains me is that some do not know Paul. They do not even know how many letters they have been written by him. They excuse themselves saying that they are uninstructed, but I say it is because they have not taken his letters in their hand and read them. If people consider me learned, it is not because I am intelligent but because I have great love for them. I read them always, every time I know I have been taught by him. You must diligently hear what he has to teach you. I desire you do this much. Seek, you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. Hence, seek St. Paul's and his vibrant letters by reading them, knock at the doors of his life-transforming thoughts to enter into the world of the New Testament, revelation on Christ's church and the human being's salvation. I am sure that new horizons on Christian being and Christian living will be open to you. St. Paul has uh, created such impetus and vibrations in the spiritual realm of Christianity ever since acceptance of Jesus Christ by his preachings and writings. He is considered the greatest theologian of our times and in all the church documents of the council, the teaching of St. Paul resonated re-echoes. It is not a versatile style of his writing that matters but his conviction that speaks through his letters that has spoken to millions of people throughout the centuries. These convictions make him the apostle, the servant and the steward of Jesus Christ. In conclusion, let us cite the words of two biblical scholars of Paul. Fawcett P.T. says that I call Paul the fifth evangelist and we ought to call him the first in point of time and of value both. In opinion of Karl Barth, who is also a significant Paul, as a child of time, addressed his contemporaries. As a prophet and apostle of the kingdom of God, he veritably speaks to all men of every age. Therefore, Paul can speak to us today and let us open our mind and heart to listen to him. Life and Personality of St. Paul He uses the Septuagint, that is the Greek Bible. The Biographical Sketch of St. Paul St. Paul was born in Tarsus around 10 AD and was a contemporary of Jesus and of Philo, the Alexandrian Jewish philosopher. He was a Jew by birth and he was circumcised on the eighth day as any Jewish male child at that epoch. Being born and brought up in Tarsus, a Greek city of Roman administration, he is considered to be a Hellenistic Jew and not a Fal- Palestinian Jew like Jesus and other apostles of Jesus. He belonged to the Pharisaic set of the Jewish religion. However, St. Jerome claims that Paul was born in Gizela in Palestine and later immigrated to Tarsus in Asia Minor. Early Childhood of Paul Jewish Education He must have re- received a traditional Jewish education which can be briefly put as follows. At five years, he had to learn by heart in the Hebrew original uh, language the scriptural passages such as the Shema Israel and the Hallel Psalms and the story of creation and the ceremonial laws and sacrifices. At uh, 10 years of age, he was supposed to be able to read the Mishnah which contained the traditions of the forefathers which the Jews believed that they had received through oral and written traditions from God. Mishnah was written in the Aramaic language which was spoken by the Jews in their homes and synagogues. At the age of 12 or 13, uh, Paul was declared the son of the law, Bar Mizwa, as every male child was supposed to be. From that moment, he was supposed to obey the law of Moses and was considered responsible for his actions before God. There were two sects of the rabbis, one is Pharisees and one is Sadducees. Pharisees were pure observants of the law after Maccabees. They defend the poor and social justice. Greek education. Being brought up as a child in the Greek city of Tarsus and from his good style and handling of the Greek language, philosophy, culture and customs of the Greeks, we can presume that he received also an appreciable Greek education. He might have received only informal education of the Greeks in Tarsus and may not have frequented their schools and gymnasium. Greek education emphasized on the techniques of human personality development and the skills for it. The training were more humanistic than scriptural or spiritual. Paul must have learned the Greek language, his grammar, rhetoric, styles of expression. The Greek school and the gymnasium encouraged games and sports which would eventually build up a healthy body and alertness of mind. Gymnastics and philosophical schools promoted philosophical arguments to establish and orient their lives for the use of society.
Roman citizenship. Paul also had the opportunity to get acquainted with the Roman culture and a way of life as he was a Roman citizen by birth. The people of other nations also acquired Roman citizenship. This Roman citizenship could be acquired either by birth or nobility or military service or by money. A Roman citizenship had the following privileges. He should not be beaten with the due trial. He cannot be crucified. He can appear, appeal directly to Caesar for trial and judgment and he was not overwhelmed by heavy taxes. Name of Saulus into Paulus is also a sign of Roman affinity of uh, Paul. It was customary at that time for the Jews and other people to receive Roman names and abandon their native's name. It is called Latinization of the names. Hence, at early childhood, Paul had acquired sufficient knowledge of Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek languages. He might have also had a workable knowledge of Latin. Paul was prepared for a universalistic mission from the very childhood. He had formation into a Pharisaic rabbi. There was a rabbinical training which mentioned in his testimony in Acts 22 verse 3. Two schools of thought were there, Shemai and Hillel. Shemai school is a strict interpretation of the law of Moses uh, and the Sabbath law especially. And uh, Hillel school is a liberal interpretation of the law. He learned also a trade for the rabbis. Gamaliel, a liberal interpretation of the law. Hillel school was another school, yet Paul persecutes the church. Paul was a tent maker, Acts 18 verse 3 and 20 verse 34. Paul earned his bread with the work of his hand, 1 Thessalonians 2 9. There was inner transformation and a conversion in Paul being made new, metamorphosis. Christ opened to him the new spirituality when he was around 36 years of age. He was like the eldest son conversion and the, for the prodigal brothers, the Gentiles. This text can be read and studied better. Paul as the persecutor of the church and then his Damascus experience and meeting Christ. He had a, another wrong formation. Admission of Paul himself, the reason for persecuting the church, opinions of the authors and the real possible reason for persecution is Deuteronomy 21-23. Teaching by the Holy Spirit about the meaning of the cross and of Jesus Christ, the interior teacher. Discovery of the significance of the cross. Insight given to him by the Holy Spirit in Galatians 3.13 and 1 Corinthians 1.18-24. Intervention of Ananias in the faith formation of Paul. He was the external teacher. Acts 9 verses 10-19 and Acts 22 verses 12-16. Skepticism of Ananias about Paul's change of life. The mistress of the Christians in Jerusalem. Instruction to Paul about the Holy Spirit and his mission in the world. To the Gentiles. Media, med, mediation in the formation and the transformation of Paul. It is said that the missionary experience of uh, Paul was very long. But before the experience, he had a silent retreat preparation to be a missionary in Arabia. Galatians 1.16 his first attempts to preach the gospel was in Antioch and his first introduction to church in Jerusalem was by Barnabas. Then there were three missionary journeys which are recorded in Acts of the Apostle. The first missionary journey is Acts 13 verses 4 to 27. It was done in 47-49 AD. Barnabas and John Mark were his companions. Point of departure and arrival were Antioch, root of the journey, the churches that were established and the sermons delivered and the people encountered were many. Second missionary journey, Acts 15 verse 36 to Acts 18 verse 22. It was done 50 to 52 AD, parting with Barnabas and John Mark, Paul's new companions Silas and Timothy, root of the journey, Antioch, Asia Minor, Macedonia, Greece, Jerusalem back to Antioch, important places visited during this journey, persons encountered in this journey, sermons that were delivered and the composition of the letters in these years. Third missionary journey, Acts 18, 23 to Acts 21, 16. AD 53 to 58, his presence at Ephesus, the new style of operation by camping in our place and extending the activity to other places. The churches he established uh, newly during this journey, the places he visited at this period of time, the letters he wrote during this period of time, the route of the return journey to Jerusalem, the words he spoke and the works he did during this journey, participation in the Jerusalem Council in 50 AD. Text to be studied are Acts 15, 1 to 35 and Galatians 1, 18 to Galatians 2, 10. Find out the ag agreements and the disagreements in these two narrations. The reason for Jerusalem Council, the solution, resolution of the council in Jerusalem as stated in the Acts and the letters of Galatians. Explanation for the condition that are laid on the pagans by the council. Paul's last agony in Rome, Acts 21, verses 17 to Acts 28, verse 31. 
the arrest of Paul and the imprisonment. At the end of his third missionary journey, he was arrested in Jerusalem. The tribune called Lysios uh, arrested him in the temple because he feared the mob would kill Paul. Paul speaks to the people about his conversion. There is a plot by the Jews to kill him. The tribune is informed of it and he sends him to Caesarea where the governor has its resident Acts 23 verses 12 to 35. Felix was the governor who heard him but wanted money from him to let him go free. During this period, the chief priests and others came to Caesarea and Paul was put on trial. Paul defended himself. Felix did not pass any judgment on Paul, Acts 24 verses 1 to 27. Persecus Festus is appointed governor and the Jews demand again a trial of Paul which is held at Caesarea and Paul appears to Caesar. In chapter 25 verses 1 to 12, Paul speaks to King Agrippa and Bernice about his conversion as he is in the prison. Acts 25 verses 13 to Acts 26 verse uh, 32. Journey from Caesarea to Rome, Acts 27 verses 1 to Acts 28 uh, verses 16. Stay in Rome under house arrest, Acts 28 verses 17 to 31. The martyrdom of St. Paul, there are two traditions. Paul was always under house arrest in Rome and was martyred in 62 to or 67 AD at the time of the Roman Emperor Nero who reigned in Rome between 54 to 68. Paul was released from prison, Rome went back to Ephesus and continued his missionary life but was once again arrested, brought to Rome and executed during the time of Nero himself. According to the common tradition, both Peter and Paul were martyred in Rome and Peter was crucified at the Vatican Hill while Paul was beheaded at a Trifonte out the, of the wall of the city of Rome. St. Paul's Basilica is built in honor of St. Paul. At the fa- facade of the Basilica is written in Latin the words of Paul in Fili- to Philippines 1 21. Miki anim vivere Christus est et mori lucrum. For me to live is Christ and to die again.